Hi, Laura here. I'm a certified personal trainer and Pilates instructor. And today I am going to be bringing you some exercises to work on upper back extension, postural exercises that you traditionally see in a mat class that's laying down on your belly. So the variations that I'm going to be showing you today are actually not going to be on your belly. They are examples or options that you can do choose for yourself if you happen to be someone that can't lay on your belly for some reason. So whether you're pregnant, whether you're breastfeeding, whether you had a herniated disc and it's just really uncomfortable for you to lay down on your back, these are still options to get the benefits of these exercises like swan, single leg kick, things like that, and still be able to utilize the benefits of those exercises while not having to lay down on your belly or not having to skip them during a class or during your own personal home workout. If you like seeing videos like this, make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you can continue to see exercises to help improve and strengthen your body movements and mechanics to help you reach your goals that you have. And if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It lets me know that you enjoy seeing content like this. And let's go ahead and get started with today's video. The first option that I'm going to show you is going to be in a seated position. So you can go ahead and grab a chair. I would prefer something that didn't have a back to it, but you could also take a chair and turn it so that you were sitting on it without the backing. I'm going to be seated at my tower here that you see over to my left, your right, and go ahead and meet me there if you would like to follow along. The one option that you have available to you for the swan is to be in a seated position just like I am. You're going to have those feet about hip width apart and take your hands right to the front of your thighs, right? Now, from here, I'm going to start by going into a rounded, angry kind of cat position so that you can feel the opposite of what we're going into, right? We're in a curved back, feeling the stretch rounded through this lower back. And then to find your swan shape, I'm going to slightly press my hands into my legs, lift my heart, lift my sternum upwards towards the sky. And it's almost like I'm spiraling my shoulders towards my spine to look upwards towards the ceiling. So notice this is my neck. This would be a cervical extension. That's not what we want. We want a thoracic extension, which is through that mid back and then round the spine again. We're going to release that stretch. I still have my hands on my knees and I continue to pull my belly backwards away from my thighs. And then I pull my chest bone up and rise my heart through my arms upwards towards the ceiling. And I'm really trying to lead more through my sternum than I am through my throat or through my face. And then relax it backwards. I use my exhale as I go back. Inhale. Lengthen the spine, spiral the chest. I almost feel like my triceps, yes, are working here as I try to open my collarbones wide and then round the back. Now, if you want an elevated version that feels and looks a little bit more like the swan, I'm gonna take you through a variation at the door. You can do one with the foam roller or without the foam roller. If you have foam roller, go ahead and grab that so you can join in with me on the next variation here. Another way you could do this exercise is coming up against a door and placing your hands on the door as if you're on a push-up position. Push the door away from you and that's going to be what's called protraction. So if you can look at my shoulder blades here, this is what would be retraction. So squeezing the shoulder blades together. Here I'm in neutral and here I'm really pushing the earth away from me. Now, as I drop my elbows downwards towards the door, I'm also going to be trying to almost nod my nose up the doorway pulling my shoulder blades away from my ears and almost imagining that I'm dragging my elbows down the doorway and then push the door away from me like I'm coming to the top of my push-up. And again, as my elbows come down, I try to lift my heart, lift my chest upwards towards the door and then push the door away from me. So I'm not just moving from my neck, I'm really trying to feel my upper back. So what my sports bra is connected, what my rib cage is connected, and trying to feel the back bend, the arch come from that upper back. Because the swan is an upper back bend. I also, in the standing variation, get to connect a little bit more to my legs. I'm standing in them, I have a little bit of uh, engagement through my butt, but I'm not clenching my bottom. I just feel that it's on to support me. 
And I'm gonna go through a couple rounds just like that. Another option that you have available is to take something like a foam roller and to put the foam roller in your doorway. So if you need one that's a little bit longer than mine, this one is a little bit shorter than a traditional um, foam roller. This is the trigger point roller that has the hole in it. I wanna say that it's like 26 or 28 inches. I think most foam rollers are around 36 inches and that would put you definitely clear across the doorway. You're gonna put your hands onto the foam roller here and from here, this makes it a little bit more like the swan on the floor that I like to start with. So I push my hands away from me and that's going to pull my shoulders kind of like out of my lats, out of my rib cage. And then I'm going to pull my shoulders down and away from my ears. And again, push the arms away from me and then pull the shoulder blades down my back, making the roller come to the floor. The foam roller goes to the ceiling. My ears are a little bit more between my arms. My foam roller comes downwards towards the ground. I can feel the outside of my lats engaged here. And then if you want to add a little bit of that upper back extension, the foam roller comes down. I'm going to look up towards it, look up-ish towards the ceiling, but I still have my belly turned on so that there's no arching in my lower back. I'm just continuing to arch from my upper back. And then that uh, foam roller goes to the sky. I look forward at the door. And again, shoulders down, the foam roller rolls down. I look upwards towards the corner of my ceiling and then I push that foam roller away. So this is so that we can get a little bit more true to that upper back extension, the arm connection that you would see in a traditional swan dive. I can add a little bit more rhythm to it as well. As long as you feel like you're connected into your shoulder girdle, your armpits that I keep referring to, and your upper back. So that would be a level up from that seated cat cow that I showed you moments ago. So now let's go into some exercises like the single and double leg kick, which are also on your belly. So for the single leg kick, the single leg kick, we're gonna be working on supporting our upper body in that open spiraled position through our shoulders. So I plug my hands into the earth and I almost imagine opening a can with both hands so that my arms whoop, can get activated as I push the ground away from me. So that's that kind of sphinx or, um, you know, Egyptian <laughs> sculpture, I think is what that sphinx thing is called, that you look like in that belly-ish position for single leg kick. I want you to pull the shoulders down and away from your ears. Your neck is lengthened. And we're going to take one of our legs behind us and lift it to the sky bend the heel in towards your bottom. If you wanna make this more like the single leg kick, you can go kick, kick in, squeeze, squeeze in, and we lower back down to the floor. Straighten it out, lift it up, kick, kick, extend, and lower down. And again, straighten it out, lift it up, kick, kick, extend, lower it down, pull it back in and under. One more time, we'll straighten it out, lift it up, kick, kick, extend, and lower it back down. So you'll notice that we're extending it to a straight position so that it could be lengthened through the front of the hips just like the single leg kick is. You get that stretch through the thigh, stretch through the hip flexor in this lengthened position here as we go from bent knee to straight leg. Your glute and hamstring activate as we squeeze the heel bone inwards towards your bottom. So that's one way, an example to do that belly exercise on your hands and knees. And since we're already in this position here, I'm also going to show you a variation of swimming. So swimming, very similar to an exercise you're probably already familiar with, a bird dog. So we're going to slide opposite arm, opposite leg out palm and toe for those opposite limbs onto the ground. I'm going to lift up, lower down, slide in. Reach out, lift up, lower down, slide in. So here we get the benefit of that back body working the torso to face the floor as if we were laying down on our belly here without actually having to be on our belly button. Now here, I think that you do get the extra benefit of having the feedback of the limbs that are connected to the ground because it helps you keep your shirt and your waist square, also helping you to keep it as a 
hip extension exercise versus a back extension exercise. You want to be feeling this in your butt, the smile line of your booty, and your hamstring. That's what's going on with the legs, as well as the back of the shoulder as you lift up and away from the ground. Now the double leg kick is one that is a little bit trickier to do. The idea behind the double leg kick is that the heels are coming in closer to your bottom. So your belly will be in, tailbone can be slightly tucked under, so you've got this lengthening happening through your low back and your hip flexors. An option that you have is to take your hands across the room as you go to lean back, bringing your bottom tighter to your heels, and then come up, squeeze your shoulder blades behind you, reaching the arms back behind you as you come up to this high kneeling position. And again, this is your heels kicking into your butt. This is your hands reaching behind you for that upper back work, the tricep work, and the postural work. And again, I like to inhale. My belly is in. I'm trying to keep away from arching my low and upper back. My hands come down. I open my chest. I try to get taller into the ground. And again, one more time, we lean it back. Belly tight, shoulders down away from the ears. Press those hands down, open through the chest. Press those knee bones into the ground. Can you get longer? And then relax. So those are just a few variations of some of the most common exercises that you can see in a traditional Pilates mat class that gives you options and variations to do if you can't lay down on your belly. If you have any questions, go ahead and leave them down in the comments down below. If you have any requests for any other types of videos, go ahead and let me know in the comments or you can find me on Instagram and I'm happy to chat with you about it in the DMs. My Instagram handle is laura.melgar.fitness. I love hearing from you, chatting with you, and learning a little bit more about how I can better help you to improve your fitness, help you get to where you want to be, because that's ultimately what we want out of life, right? We want to be able to move and enjoy it the best that we can so that we can keep up with our kids, keep up with our lifestyle, and keep this life that we have enjoyable and fun. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel and turn on the notifications so you can see when I post new videos. Have a great one and I'll see you next time.